Hello. Today is a day of mourning, but it should also be a day of reflection. So I want to give you guys some food for thought. Now for a lot of you, especially those who are younger, this is George W. Bush. He likes to paint. His favorite cuddle buddy is Michelle Obama. No, seriously, that man really loves canoodling with Michelle Obama. But to so many of us, he's also this guy. A man who would sit in a Sarasota classroom for seven minutes after being told that the second plane hit the World War Trade Center. A man who would usher us into an era of forever wars, torture, the stripping of U.S. citizens' rights through the Patriot Act, drone strikes, all of which were things that President Obama said were behind us and didn't need to be looked in further back in 2009. He's a man that would help Donald Rumsfeld clean up his mess. For those of you who don't remember, Donald Rumsfeld had a direct hand in funding Al-Qaeda, specifically Osama bin Laden, when they were fighting Saddam Hussein. He would also help Vice President Dick Cheney make a fuck ton of money. In 2002, Dick Cheney was not only the vice president, but also a board member of Halliburton. Halliburton being a defense contracting company that would win several military contracts, culminating in tens of billions of dollars from the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. Speaking of Iraq, that's a war that was predicated on the lie that Saddam Hussein had WMDs that we are still fighting till this day. While all the quote unquote left wing media cleanses the reputations of these men, I want you guys to remember they are all war criminals. I don't want to just talk about these men who made a career out of ruining millions of people's lives. I also want to address the first responders and how our country deems fit to treat them. And not just the first responders who ran into that building that was still crumbling down trying to help other people escape. But the first responders who stayed behind for days, weeks, months, digging through rubble, trying to dig out their colleagues and victims of 9-11. The 9-11 Health and Compensation Act was passed in 2010, and its intention was to cover all of the medical bills for first responders. However, that act is not permanent. So every few years, you have people like Jon Stewart having to do things like this. Behind me, a filled room of 9-11 first responders, and in front of me, a nearly empty Congress. Sick and dying, they brought themselves down here to speak to no one. If you guys don't do anything else today, please take a moment to reflect on the legacy of 9-11 and the victims who are still suffering behind it.